Hey guys, what is up? My name is Tom Spark and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be helping you find out how to do your own research in the VPNs. Now today we're going to give you 17 things to look for when researching a VPN's reputation on your own. So after you watch this video, you'll know how to do your own research to decide if you trust a VPN. So guys, I'm going to be trying to move throughout this list pretty quickly to educate you as fast as possible. One thing though, guys, if you do want to help support the channel, watch this clip right here. We'll all be talking about some of my favorite products I use every day here on the channel. They are affiliate um, partners of mine, but they're not sponsored or paid to be here in every video. But if you do support the products and buy them, I will receive a small cutback. Now, if you guys want to get your privacy to a bare minimum online, you should at least be using four products that I recommend here on the channel that I really, really like. You're going to need a good VPN, and you can find my recommended VPNs on VPNTierless.com. Tier 1 options are the best. Use code TOMSPARK for all those ones, and it should get you some discount. Number two is you're going to need an anti-doxing tool that deletes your real-life information online from data brokers. So if someone does manage to find your, your real-life name online, they can't look up your address, your phone number, or any of your family members to harass or even swat you. That's essential. I would recommend a service called Join Delete Me. And if you use code TOMSPARK, you can get 10% off that. Thirdly, I would recommend a private encrypted email provider instead of using Google that pretty much just logs all your data and sells it off to advertisers. Instead, use a private encrypted email like Private Mail. With code Tom Spark, you can get 50% off that. Super solid service, actually made by the same people who made TorGuard VPN, so you know you can trust it. Also, guys, if you're looking for a more private and anonymous way of calling people, texting, signing up for accounts, or anything like that where you don't want to put your real number, I would recommend a service called Hush.com, which has a phone app that you can use to have your own private phone number. And if you use the link down in the description down below, you could get a limited account uh, pretty much lifetime for around 25 bucks with 6,000 text messages or around 1,000 call minutes per year, which is a really good deal. Anyways, guys, if you want to help support the channel, check out any of those products and use my disc. So, guys, the first thing you should look for is can you find an about page on your VPN's website? Can you go down to the bottom and find an about us page that lists all the employees or at least some of them, the CEO especially, as well as some other higher level management? By seeing this, it gives you a good amount of indication about how transparent the VPN is being with who works there. And if it doesn't show it, chances are it's trying to hide it for one reason or another. Now, it's not always a nefarious reason. Sometimes VPNs are just kind of stingy with providing personal details on the employees of the company. For some reason, they think that since it's a privacy and anonymity based company, they also get a free check and get to be anonymous when handling your data. Personally, I prefer companies that are more transparent and letting you know who runs it. So if something does go wrong, like if they leak your data or something like that, they could be held responsible in an easier way than just someone who's anonymous who could just run away and you never know what happened to the VPN. Going into that, you know, who is the CEO? What is their experience? What is their background? What have they been doing in the company? And finding out more information about the CEO can give you some indication about how things are running behind the scenes. The third thing I look for is where is the company based? Is it based in a location that you trust? Is it based in a shell company, uh, something like the Panama uh, or British Virgin Islands? In my experience, I kind of prefer companies that are based in locations, even if it's based in the United States or Canada, Switzerland, Sweden, even if it's within the 14 eyes, as long as the company's being upfront and on about, honest about it, I kind of do prefer that than being based in Panama or British Virgin Islands. It's kind of up to you though. Some people prefer being based in those shell locations because they think for some reason they're immune to spy agencies, which isn't really how it works. Because um, if a spy agency wants your data, they'll find a way to get it, no matter the cost. So it's kind of up to you on that one. But for me personally, I prefer when companies are upfront about where they are and they're not using shell locations or commonly used shell locations. Anyway, guys, the next thing that I look for is looking at the company's Twitter. Does it have an active Twitter account? What kind of stuff is it posting on Twitter? Is it posting, you know, privacy blogs, uh, updating you about what's going on in the world? Is it just kind of trying to get more users? Is it having good interactions with users? Um, that is something you can look for and definitely take into account. Next thing you can look for is, has there been any leaks or hacks with the company? One way you can look this up is look up the VPN's name and then hack or leak. Generally, you could find information about if there's been any hacks or leaks in the past. And this is something you definitely consider if you should trust your VPN. 
Now remember guys, there are some VPNs out there involved in some scandals one or another. Take for example TorGuard, a lot of people like to diss it and say that it's been hacked in the same way other VPNs have. But actually, in some cases which third party servers leaked information or something like that, TorGuard did secure its servers properly with PKI management or so they say, which didn't lead to any customer information leaking at all. So they secured things on their end, which pretty much means they weren't hacked in the same way other VPNs could have been if they didn't secure things properly. So just because you might find some information, make sure to do your research and read in depth to see really what went on. Another thing you can look for is does your VPN have a bug bounty program? How active is the program? Are there tons of bugs being posted all over the place? Just because the VPN has a bug bounty program, doesn't mean that it's necessarily, you know, super trusted automatically. If there's tons of bugs being posted all the time, that means the VPN is relying probably more on this bug bounty program than they should. Generally though, bug bounty programs are a good thing to have. Another thing you should look for is how old is the VPN? How long has it been around for? Um, generally VPNs that have stood the test of time are more trustworthy in terms of my opinion. Some of the most trusted VPNs on my channel are very old and have been there for a long time. Torgor VPN, Air VPN, OVPN. Some of these VPNs have been around since 2013. I swear to God, I will kill you. Another thing you can look for is who is the parent company? Which company owns the VPN that you're actually using? Um, you could look more information into them if you can't find information about the VPN itself. Take for example, Cape. It owns a lot of VPNs, you could look into that. And another thing you can look into is was the VPN company acquired or sold? A lot of times VPNs are sold around. And in my opinion, if a VPN has been acquired or sold in some way, generally it's probably less trustworthy because <laughs> For one reason or another, VPN probably wasn't doing well, and the fact that someone sells a VPN generally isn't a good sign. Next up, has the company ever given away logs on any users? This is kind of a basic thing you could look for, and there have been examples of it in the past, so it's generally a good thing to look and see if it's been done for the VPN you want to use. Next up, does the company specifically say outwardly that it does not pay for reviews or CPA deals or pay customers or pay reviewers are certain upfront costs to acquire customers for them. Now, most of the popular VPNs do this, I think, in one way or another. Most of the smaller VPNs either don't have the funds um, or the desire to do this, which is why most of my RVP VPNs don't pay for reviews or use CPA deals. In my opinion, VPNs that don't pay for reviews or CPA deals or other kind of um, ways to influence reviews negatively or influence the review scene altogether negatively aren't as trustworthy in my opinion. Next up, you wanna see what the VPN's privacy policy is like. Does it say that it collects logs? Does it connect minor logs like connection and bandwidth logs? Does it connect no logs? Does it collect your IP address? Surprisingly, some VPNs do admit things that you wouldn't want them to do in their privacy policy because they don't think anyone's gonna read it. Um, so make sure to read the privacy policy. Generally, what you wanna look for is what logs are collected during VPN use. Things like connection and bandwidth logs aren't ideal, but are sometimes not a big deal. The thing you really want to look for is if it collects IP addresses, internet history, and some of those things, which are definitely a big no-no. You should look up your VPN's um, web archive and see what's on their old website. In some cases, some VPNs have actually removed their web archive, which is very suspicious to me and means they probably are hiding something. It's just something interesting you should probably try. Next up, check if the VPNs involved in any lawsuits or litigation. A lot of times, lawsuits or litigation going on with VPNs can be very questionable and kind of give you an idea of the company behind um, the VPN you're using. If your VPN has tried to sue reviewers or done other things that has involved them in lawsuits, lots of the times they probably can't be trusted. Next up, has your company done anything questionable in regards to just the overall management of the product? Have they tried to sneak in any auto cancellation fees or anything like that? Those are the kind of things you can look for and are a little bit trickier to find, but you still can find things that the VPN has done um, just that have rubbed people the wrong way. Take for example something like private internet access, remove the forums which upset a lot of people. There wasn't really any good reason to do something like that. And there have also been other cases out there where VPNs have done stupid things that have given them a lot of negative press. Next up, how many trackers does the VPN have on Android and how many trackers does it have on the website? Generally, I like to look for zero trackers on Android 
and around under 10 permissions on Android as well with zero trackers or zero to maybe one or two trackers on their website depending on you know what trackers they are. Look for those things. Generally, if your VPN has a lot of trackers on Android, it's probably not going to be as trusted to me, and you'll have to make your own decisions there. The last thing you should look for when doing your own research on a VPN is, is the VPN top ranked on review sites? If your VPN is top ranked on CNET, PC Mag, Tom's Guide, or pretty much any other review website out there, if it's one of the top three VPNs, chances are this VPN is paying for that spot and probably means you shouldn't trust it as much because if they have to pay to get to the top, then it kind of means that, you know, they're kind of manipulating the review space and promoting uh, advertisements instead of real objective reviews here, like on my channel. Anyways, guys, I hope you liked that video showing you and giving you some of the tools and ways I look at VPN's reputations and if I can trust them to recommend them to you guys to use. Let me know if you use any of these similar metrics of analysis to decide if you should use or trust a VPN. And I'll see you again in the next video very soon.